Hello and welcome back to Ra Ra's Ventures. Today we are here at Buster Farm. Now, I'm really excited about today. We have been given permission to come here and uh, do a vlog here, which means that we can interact, ask questions and film any activities that are going on, which there is today. And you'll find out later on in the film what it is. We hope to film some of it and maybe ask some questions. We'll see how it goes. Sus Farm ticked all the boxes come in here when researching on what they have to offer and what they're about. So I'm going to read a little about that quickly. So Bus Farm is an ancient farm and is a multi-century visitor experience. Ideal for those with a variety of learning needs, learning needs and styles. All their activities and lecture tours are designed with accessibility in mind. So you can see why I'm quite excited to visit here. They cover everything that we're looking into, accessibility for people with disabilities. And that's visible or non-visible. As you all know, COVID-19 has hit everywhere. So I need to read to you so I need to read to you how it's affected Buster Farm. I've quoted this from their website, so I give you the right information before you visit, but I do advise to keep checking their website if you are coming, because as we all know, things are changing all the time. So as current, this is what their website says. We're currently open on selected days, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday for a limited number of visitors, staff and volunteers. Tickets will be for a time slot and release over two weeks. Please note, unfortunately, we do not currently have the staff levels to be able to monitor our phone lines if you have an inquiry regarding your ticket or booking that is not covered by the frequently asked questions on their website, please email them and they'll get back to you as soon as possible. I will be leaving the link underneath so you're able to do this or you can visit their website to press their link to go straight through. Things that they've had to change because of COVID. You have to pre-book is a must so there's plenty of room on the farm to keep a safe distance when going into a shop you must wear a mask unless you're exempt or you have a lanyard they also have put in a one-way system to go around the farm and they have limited the amount of people allowed in toilets at one time this is so they keep up cleaning and safe distance they have placed sanitizer around the farm for you to use but have asked not to bring your own. I do believe this is something to do with the animals. I'm not 100% sure but I will check this out. The cafe is open but only offering takeaway service so they have put out more picnic areas, seating, benches etc which we will take pictures of and do a bit of filming with. So with that out of the way Shall we go and see what Buster Farm has to offer? Come on, let's go! The Saxon house area. Uh, this is where they have a working farm and a Saxon house which is based on the unearthly of the nearby village of Cholton. The working farm, they grow varieties of ancient crops and work with the Species Recovery Trust as a safe site for an endangered species. They also work with the Rare Breeds Survival Trust and are home to a rare breed of animals including sheep, goats and pigs. Now, while you are here, you can buy a bag of food and feed the animals which we will be doing and filming and sharing with you. Okay, so we're gonna have a walk around and see what we can see. Okay, so we have come to the Roman Villa Garden, 
Um, um, we've come to the garden bit first as we came across this first. So you've got all your herbs, it's a working garden and on each little part they've got a little bit of information. So the Romans are said to have introduced many herbs to Britain including rosemary, thyme, bay and basil. And then each little plot has a little bit about what they are and about. Okay, so we're going to walk round to the house and have a view, look round and see what we can see. So if you follow me, good day. Be warned, the path is, is flattish but it does have stones so it will be a bit bumpy in a wheelchair but it's accessible so please bear that in mind very peaceful here and as you're walking around you'll notice that there's lots of different talks going on about individual stuff which hopefully we'll be filming later on as throughout the day um, and also they have alcohol gel spread it out around the farm so please use it and when you go into buildings, you have to wear a mask. Now, at this place, they have put in a concrete path, so it's more accessible, which is brilliant. So this is the Roman Villa um, and I've quoted from the website so I give you the right information. So a Roman Villa is based on a dig from Sparslot near Winchester which was built between 2002 and 2005 as part of the Discovery TV series. It has recently undergone extensive renovation officially reopening in May 2019. It now includes a mosaic floor, a working hypocast, toilets and a kitchen garden which we've just seen the kitchen garden. So we're going to have a walk around and show you the different things. Now straight away we have the mosaic floor which obviously, for reasons we're not allowed them, because it's taken them ages to build this. they would have worn back in the Saxon days and different kind of bowls they used and pottery okay so here we have a stove for their cooking and what looks like a bed Okay. 
can do your own designs, as you can see people have done. We'll do a little diamond. There you go. I could put Rara's ventures, but I'm not going to because I'm not a big child, just a little child. Oh, we've come to the toilet area. Yes, these are the kind of toilets they would use. bowls filled with burning charcoal. One room in the villa had a underfloor heating system called a hypocast. Beneath the floor was a grid of tunnels. A fire was lit at the entrance and heat spread under the floors and up the walls through the flues heating the space. I just wanted to point out that obviously at the minute everything's one level um, but this next room does go up and they put a slope instead of a step so it's more disabled friendly for wheelchairs so I just wanted to point that out to you guys so I'm going to go through have a little noisy so I think it's very dark in here but I think this would have been the sleeping area um, very slim single bed. Not sure if I'd want to sleep on that right now, but yes. So I would say this is a bedroom of some sort. So we are at the Stone Age area. Here are three buildings the large Horton House, which is an ongoing construction, which we're going to show you in a minute and two structures based on digs at Durrington Walls near Stonehenge. Other experiments in this period include the construction and testing of log boats and the growing of early crops such as Darnell and Upright Gooseblit. Funny word isn't it? But yes. Before we go in, all buildings remember that you have to wear a face mask unless you're exempt like me so please put this in mind also it's only one say one group so one family at a time or a couple in each building for um social distancing okay so let's go and have a little movie come on direct <laughs> This house was one of the one of an estimated 1,000 plus houses built across the huge site of Darrington Walls near Stonehenge. Imagine living in here. It's actually quite warm, but it's a warm day. But um, they would have had a little fire going, as you can see, and that's why there's holes in the top of the roof to let out the smoke. It still would have been quite smoky, I would have expected. This one is a little different, as you can see, before we go in, the entrance kind of has a kind of porch and you go in and round. So let's go and see. Make sure you duck. Okay, so I'd say this one isn't completed maybe? Um, or this is like a storage unit that they would have kept everything in. Look 
box there. Here's straw, what would have been used for the building materials. There's no like flooring, it is just dirt, compacted. So now we're going to move on to the main house which is also still in construction. So let's go and have a little model and see the main house. Please hide your heads, there's lots of low points. additional strength. The slight tempering of the building floor plan leads to the distinctive hog back roof shape as the thatch remains at the constant pitch for the waterproofing. Scott's pine has been used for the framework with one end wall constructed of upright oak planks and one of wattle and dub. This shows two possible interpretations. This shows two possible interpretations for the archaeology. Okay, so now we're going to walk around to show you it as it's built so far. Um, they had to stop building construction due to COVID. Obviously, everything was shut down. Um, but as you can see, they've done loads here. Um, and it takes time and a good team to work together, the right kind of people to work with the right materials. So there's a lot to take in. But I'll tell you one thing, it's lovely and cool in here. Really cool, I like it. It's quite hot out there. Okay, so we are going to go have a lunch break and rest for a bit and we'll catch up with you soon. Bye! Hey guys, so we've just come back from having a break and a bit of lunch. Uh, we are now at the Iron Age area with the Roman Saxons behind us. Um, now I'm going to quote from the website so I give you the right information. Iron Age enclosure fixtures, six reconstructed roundhouses based on various sites from across the UK, including Daneberry Hillford and Glastonbury Lake Village. Each has been chosen to test different form of construction techniques. We also have an Iron Age toilet, herb garden, granary, grain storage pits and an encircling ditch surrounding the houses. We are now going to have a little walk round so we can show you each one. So let's go and have a little look. Again, you must wear face covering going into each building. So this is the roundhouse, which is about 150 BC. Um, uh, the building's based on an excavation of an Iron Age roundhouse from Dunbury Hillfoot near Andover. Andover Hans. So let's have a little waddle in. As you can see, the flooring is chalk. Um, very fine, 
fantastic. Uh, I would have done maybe some cooking here and sat around, maybe tell talk stories. Even looks like there is a little oven. As you can see, there are skin covers on the little benches, very low benches, uh, which we presume would have been for comfortability or to keep warm in the cold evenings. Okay, so we're going to have another go there and see what's in the next house. Now, I do believe the next house is the main house, which is a bit bigger. Okay, so this looks like where they would have done their main cooking and grinding of materials for making stuff and for cooking food. So I'd say this is probably a cooking area. It looks like the cook had to sleep in here too. Okay, so this one, please be careful, and we have to bend to get in there. Oh, sorry. Uh, this house represents the smallest house found on the site of Glastonbury Lake Village. The original house was built on a marshy ground and was prone to sinking. Oh my god, I would not like to stay in here long. So we decided to build an experimental lightweight house to see if sinking could be prevented. The wattle and dope walls are fairly thin, made of Somerset willow rather than local hazel. The roof is made using lighter ring thatching and the doors are covered with animal skins instead of wood. Despite all these measures, it still weighs 4.3 tonnes. That's, that's very heavy, isn't it? Um, I personally would not like to live in this near the water if it sinks. So, uh, I do like my bricks and water. <laughs> layers of bushwood and timber. The patterns on the internal wall are based on real designs from Iron Age pottery. Here we have a replica of an Iron Age toilet. Now, as you can see, it's um, very basic. Okay, so this is an Iron Age house. Now, they say that a whole family would have lived in here. The mum, the dad, the children, um, and it extended. And everything would happen in this one round part of the house. There were no separate rooms, nothing. So all your cooking happened here, all your Meetings happened here, sleeping happened here, everything that you do at home happened in this one room. And I just want to share this because it's quite amazing. Could you imagine you and your family living in here with no separate room? Pretty cool. The floor again is when they were cooking it we got quite smoky okay so let's go and see what else we can find 
want to stop here so I can share with you some of the things that they offer and what is at the visitor centre. You have the cafe and the toilets and the gift shop in the visitor's park. So once you've been around, make sure you go for a cuppa and have a look at the shop. There's lots of little gifty things in there. I know we'll be visiting there too. Um, Bus Farm is a non-for-profit community interest company with a focus on education and research. They welcome over 35,000 school children to visit them each year to learn about life in the past through hands-on practical activities. Did you know that they also are a place for regular filming location for films and documentaries and TV dramas? which I'll leave a link below so you can have a look at that. So next time you're watching telly, you might notice that they're filming here and you'll be able to say, I've been there, just like we have. Do you already know a film that's been filmed here? Let us know, leave a comment down below. Okay, so we're gonna carry on having a look round and we'll see you in a minute. Bye. Hi, so we have come to the end of our day visiting Buster Farm. We've had such a brilliant day today and feel so lucky that we're able to come along Buster Farm. There's so much here to learn about and interact with. It's a lovely day out and suitable for all ages and all needs. I also love the fact that it's hands-on learning outdoors. I think this place is a brilliant place to visit with all disabilities. They do everything they can so you can get the most out of your day. I would like to say a big thank you to Buster Farm for letting Rara's Adventures come here today to share with others what to expect whilst visiting here and what they have to offer. I also wanted to let you know that they have a teacher here who teaches special needs and when schools come to visit she is able to help and interact more with the children which is a lovely touch. I also wanted to say that you can hire wheelchairs but probably best to pre-book them if you know that you might need one. The ground is suitable for wheelchairs, it's not all level but is accessible. They have also done a lot of work to widen the doorways so that it's more accessible to wheelchairs which makes the experience a lot better for people in wheelchairs. There's a disabled toilet here and ramps up into the information centre where their, where their disabled toilet is and where the shop is and the calf. Please do not forget to check out their website before visiting and planning your visit in case they have any other activities going on that you may want to join in. Also check their website for any updates regarding COVID and please don't forget to book your ticket before coming or you will be turned away. I would like to say a big thank you to everyone supporting us on YouTube and do not forget if you haven't already don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I hope you all enjoyed your visit with us today and we look forward to seeing you again next month with more Rara's adventures. So take care and we'll see you soon. Bye!